Others appear echoing what we whisper in secret. And if they echo fear, doubt, or uncertainty, no shame, no condemnation, be still and know that I am. And you'll see, they no longer echo fear, doubt, or uncertainty. Only your true way of being, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Today, I would like to discuss this further with you in a way that you can practically apply what I'm sharing to experience wonderful, harmonious relationships, romantic relationships, friendships, business relationships, family relationships. Thus, I titled today's conversation mind map, Others Echo What You Whisper in Secret. This was inspired by a question that I received the other day which was, why does it appear at times that if an individual has an idea and they tell it to another, the other speaks of doubt? And we could relate this to any form of relationship communication. Ultimately, there is no other. They appear as others, revealing the doubts identified with. Be still and know that I am. And all doubts dissolve. I like how Neville Goddard once said it in his lecture, Pruning Shears of Revision. He said, When I meet people tomorrow that today disappointed me, they will not tomorrow. For in me, I have changed the very nature of that being. And having changed him, he bears witness tomorrow of the change that took place within me. So that's only God. As we discussed in Sunday's video, I recommend watching it. I'll link in the description to it. Only God appearing and appearing to play all roles through imagination. The individual that appears imagines what God appears as. Exodus 3.14 And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Be still and know that I am. Now, James Allen, in his book, The Heavenly Life, he said something interesting. He said, The secret of life, of abundant life, with its strength, its felicity, and its unbroken peace, is to find the divine center within oneself and to live in and from that instead of in that outer circumference of disturbances, the clamors, cravings, and argumentations. What is being referred to is what is related to the experiences. So in today's context, we're talking about relating harmoniously with others and how and why others reflect our thoughts, what we whisper in secret. I see this many times. In the earlier stages, I was identified with doubts. And when I had an idea, I would share it with someone, and sure enough, they would reflect that doubt. Now, this was true for, we could say, desirable conversations as well. That was something that I was interested in, and I felt in my heart that others would be genuinely interested in what I was thinking. And sure enough, they would show up reflecting that. Engaging wonderful conversations. So, I want to relate this over to a movie that I used to watch when I was a child. I used to watch this over and over again. It was called Enter the Dragon. One of my favorite movies of all time starring Bruce Lee. In the movie, he was talking to his teacher. There was a scene where he was talking to his teacher, and his teacher said, I see your talents have gone beyond the mere physical level. Your skills are now at the point of spiritual insight. I have several questions. What is the highest technique you hope to achieve? In which he responded, 
to have no technique. He said, very good. What are your thoughts when facing an opponent? In which he replied, there's no opponent. And why is that? He said, because the word I does not exist. So again, I'll go back to what I mentioned earlier. There's only God, only God appearing and appearing to play all roles through imagination. The individual that appears imagines what God appears as. Now, why this is helpful when it comes to relating with others and what I mentioned earlier about how others appear to echo what we whisper in secret. Why this is helpful is if you desire to experience harmonious relationships, whatever kind of relationships that you desire, personal relationships, romantic relationships, business relationships, relating with people wherever you go in public, if you would like to have harmonious relationships, understand that the true self already is love, happiness, peace, bliss, and fulfillment. The individual that asked me the question, what they truly desire is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. They do not desire to experience doubt, yet they experienced it because they were subconsciously identified with a belief, or we could say story, that was revealing the doubt. Now, to experience harmonious relationships, it is key to be in a state of flowing. And more specifically, allow the mind through which thoughts, emotions, and behaviors are experienced to experience life in a flow-based way, which translates into wonderful conversations. Wonderful, harmonious, mutually beneficial conversations. Natural, true way of being. Reflecting true self-acceptance. For further elaboration on this, I recommend watching the video I did recently on personal magnetism. I'll link in the description to it. So what I mean by this, very specifically, is not having an inharmonious relationship with the mind. Not having an inharmonious relationship with the thoughts not having an inharmonious relationship with emotions, not having an inharmonious relationship with the behaviors. This is how in the book, which by the way, some of my sources who are in martial arts say that particular part where Bruce Lee spoke about that was inspired by Tuck Wan Soho. And there's actually a wonderful book called The Unfettered Mind, Writings of the Zen Master to the Sword Master. This was the the William Scott Wilson translation. In there, it said, the mind must always be in a state of flowing. For when it stops anywhere, that means the flow is interrupted. And it is this interruption that is injurious to the well-being of the mind. When the swordsman stands against his opponent, he was not to think of the opponent, nor of himself. Again, there is no opponent. There is no I because there is no individual self. Because truly, the individual self is an appearance of the true self. So, he is not to think of the opponent, nor of himself, nor their sword movements. He just stands there with his sword, which, regardless of all technique, is ready only to follow the dictates of the subconscious. When he strikes, it is not the man but the sword in the hand of the man's subconscious that strikes. So we're using a martial arts example here. This is very helpful if you're in sports, martial arts, etc., 
what I'm speaking about, particularly in this video, is harmonious relationship with others. If we generate this idea of the other is an opponent, the mind is an opponent, thoughts are opponents, emotions are opponents, then what kind of experience are we going to generate? Well, from my experience, as I released identification to the belief that the mind, thoughts, emotions are opponents, others appeared less and less to be opponents. So there's a wonderful book to go into the depth of the state of flowing. Wonderful book called Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. I refer to it a lot, as you know. I'm going to link in the description to my flow-based life series. I recommend watching it again, again, and again. Because not only is that series beneficial for the entrepreneur, career professional, all areas of life, it's also beneficial for relationships. Because when we are in our flow, we have witnessed many times conversations are authentic and from the heart. There is no identification. Be still and know that I am. Now, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, in the book Flow, he talks about the flow process, which we've discussed in the videos. It's very helpful when it comes to relationships. Number one, having a clear vision of the kind of relationships you desire to experience. Knowing what you want. And if you're dating right now and you're experiencing the dating life, then each date brings you further clarity. As you go through the dates, you experience the dates and you understand yourself and you know what it is that you desire in the relationships. So clarity, we could say, or the vision, clarity of the vision, arises on the journey to actualizing whatever the harmonious relationships that you desire. And so, some may know right in the beginning. I mentioned in that video that I have a friend. He married his girlfriend from high school. They met each other in high school. And they got married. They have a wonderful family. He has a grandson. Wonderful marriage. Met her in high school. I have another friend. He met a woman and he ended up proposing to her on the first date. They got married. And they have a wonderful lifestyle. They actually run a number of businesses together. Wonderful, harmonious relationships. So there are times where you know with certainty who you're going to be with. And there are times that you might not know. Nothing wrong with you. No shame and condemnation. Clarity arises as you experience life. Clarity arises on the journey to actualizing your vision. You can even say the vision is clarified on the journey to actualizing your vision. The vision is also clarified by going within. Asking some questions as to what it is that you truly desire. There's no need to look around to this outer world for opinions as to what you should desire, what you should not desire. Go within only God gives and fulfills desires. And God appears to animate all that appears through imagination. Again, I watched Enter the Dragon over and over again when I was a kid, and I didn't pick this up, but his teacher was saying, he said, I see your talents have gone beyond the mere physical level. Your skills are now at the point of spiritual insight. And he asked questions. What is the highest technique? There is no technique. Now, what is this experience like, experientially? A person knows what to say, what to not say, do or not do on their dates, and they're not shaming or condemning themselves. And so they're not afraid to go on dates. And so in the book Flow, he speaks about a nice harmony between challenge and skill. As in, if you're challenged by experiences or appearances during dates, no shame and condemnation. What is the belief identified with? Release identification to it. As we get into the flow, 
we remain in the flow, a person becomes autotelic, as he referred to in the book, where actions and awareness become one. Actions and awareness become one. And when actions and awareness become one, which is the true way of being, being as you are, a person experiences what I referred to in a recent video as active meditation, living a meditative life. As James Allen said, the secret of life, of abundant life, with its strength, its felicity, and its unbroken peace, is to find the divine center within oneself. How do you find that divine center? By being still. And live in and from that. How does one experience life by living in and from that? Flow. Notice this. Anytime you have wonderful, harmonious conversations with another, you're not identified with the doubts. You're not identified with inharmonious beliefs that are not true and authentic to your true way of being, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. You desire to experience love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment in your relationships. There's nothing wrong with you. Nothing wrong with experiencing the being that you are reflected as wonderful relationships. So, actions and awareness become one. And as I mentioned, no shaming and condemning the mind, no shaming and condemning the thoughts, no shaming and condemning the emotions, no shaming and condemning the actions. This allows the mind to always be in a state of flowing because there's no interruption, which again, was said to be injurious to the well-being of the mind. We can call that a flow restrictor. Again, watch my flow-based life series. I recommend watching it and applying it. And I can assure you, as my story has been, since I made flow a priority in 2017, when I look back at my entire life, I realized that when I had the most harmonious relationships, the joyous experiences, while I was on dates, relationships, personal life, business life, was while I was in flow. And that's why I always say, make flow a priority. Make yourself a priority by being in flow, being as you are. Now let's get really precise. When he said, actions and awareness become one, actions and awareness become one is experienced in conversations with others, in relationships, as we could say, awareness and thought, awareness and emotion, awareness and actions. So let's explore these and how to apply it. So when it comes to thinking, very much aligned with what we discussed in the Seven Day Mental Diet by Emmett Fox, which I'll link to in the description, observing your thoughts without judgment. So one may have a thought of uncertainty, about if the other person will accept them for who they are on the date. Seven-day mental diet, which, as I say seven-day mental diet, I consider it a lifestyle, which is, again, it's simply notice the thoughts that arise in your mind without labeling yourself negatively for witnessing them. What I mean by that is if a thought arises in mind where one thinks that the person that they are on the date with is too good for them, where is that occurring? Only in mind. If they identify with that thought, they begin to operate from that state and experience that date from that state. So no shaming or condemning the thought. Pure acceptance. Observing your thoughts without identifying with them. Pure acceptance. Acceptance allows you to acknowledge your thoughts without getting caught up in self-judgment by saying this thought means this and this thought means that in a not-so-ideal way. Acknowledge that, as we discussed in the 7-Day Mental Diet, thoughts may appear and disappear. 
and they do not need to define your identity. You choose how you define your identity. Allowing thoughts to flow, number three. Allowing them to flow, again the word flow. Allowing these thoughts that are not true and authentic to your true way of being, which is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, to flow out of your mind leads to clarity. You'll notice this. You'll know what to say, not say, do, or not do before the date, during the date, after the date, and you'll have a wonderful time. Next, we have awareness and emotion. The same when it comes to thoughts. Observation without judgment. Observing emotions without judgments. What I mean by this, observing emotion without labeling them or judging them. Emotions are energy in motion. If one starts labeling their emotions, they can start identifying with those labels. Be still and know that I am. Without labeling yourself negatively, and you could do this anywhere. You could do this while you're on the date. You could do this before your dates, after your dates, before interacting with a person. And you'll notice that you will not be identified with the doubt. You will not be identified with the fear-based beliefs. Because you transcend them. Those beliefs exist in mind, and no shame in condemnation. They were formed for this reason or that reason. There's no need to point fingers. There's only one cause, I am. Be still and know that I am. And mind is purified. Again, this is acceptance. Practice accepting emotions as they are without trying to resist them. Similar to what we talked about in a recent video where I said, resistance is my lover. Why? Because I'm not afraid of resistance. Resistance reveals what I'm identified with. I simply don't identify with it anymore by letting the resistance be. Thank you, resistance, for revealing whatever kind of doubt, whatever kind of belief. I choose not to identify with it. Practically speaking, accepting the emotions as they are in the moment. And what happens? You've already accepted the end. Acceptance of the end wills the means. You already accept it. That you have a wonderful, harmonious relationship with people wherever you are. And this world is rearranging to reflect it. Some way, somehow. The cause within appears as all that appears and animates all that appears to reflect what was imagined. Accept it as true. So... Pure self-acceptance, true self-acceptance. I already am. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And so as emotions arise, which emotions are energy in motion, we let them be. They're part of the human experience. Not to generate suffering or resistance. Those are only beliefs in mind in relation to appearances, in relation to emotions, that are generating those experiences. So again, number three, allowing emotions to flow. So I related this also to athletes, related to martial arts, because while you are flowing in your martial arts, your dance, sports, you'll notice that you're thinking accurately as applicable. Emotions arise and you regulate automatically. You're still experiencing emotions, yet you're allowing them to flow. Part of the entire experience. Thoughts, emotions, part of the experience, which includes, number three, awareness and actions. So as one is having a conversation with a person, if, let's say, 
somebody echoed a doubt which was identified with. We may get into the act of trying to convince the other person, maybe get into an unnecessary argument, and generating more unnecessary emotional resistance, thoughts that are not in harmony. We can in that moment, if let's say we did respond to something in an undesirable way, let's say a person reflected our doubt, to not shame and condemn ourselves any further. The same is to be said, let's say, if you're on a date and you feel that you're not walking confidently enough or something, or you watch some videos on YouTube and it said you need to walk like this or need to walk like that, and so now you're stuck in your head. Be still and know that I am. And you'll notice, your body language will change to be authentically in harmony with a harmonious interaction with the other person. So, like we did with awareness and emotion, awareness and thoughts, awareness and actions. Again, why? As he said in the book, actions and awareness become one. Well, we can also say emotion and awareness become one. Thoughts and awareness become one relax back into the flow. Pure acceptance. You can observe your behaviors without judgment. You might even, let's say, if you felt you weren't smiling enough, I'm not smiling enough, that's fine. I'll smile more now, <laughs> or something like that. And so, when we imagine ourselves to be all that we desire to be now, being as you are. Everything flows naturally, authentically, and automatically. And so, this also helps us with observing the behaviors or the actions without judgment or shame. We no longer dwell on the past, which we could say past seeming mistakes, Instead, we allow our attention to go in the direction that is related to our vision. I say this often. Our attention goes in the direction to reveal what we are subconsciously identified with. If our vision is the reality and we no longer identify with the former beliefs, then we allow the vision to determine where our attention goes, how the energy flows, our experience with emotions, our experience with thoughts, our experience with the actions. And, you know, as they said in The Unfettered Mind, the mind is kept in a state of flowing, and it doesn't stop anywhere, and thus the flow is not interrupted. As they said, this interruption is injurious to the well-being of the mind. We can call that dichotomous thinking, black and white thinking, release in the moment. Release identification to the thoughts. Release identification to the emotions. Release identification to labeling the behaviors in an undesirable way. Be still and know that I am. And what happens? Actions and awareness become one. Behaviors automatically recalibrate. You know what to say, not say, do, not do. And it happens automatically. While you're in flow, it happens automatically. Which is why I always say, make flow a priority. And I can assure you that those doubts that were once identified with no longer appear. And if they appear, you won't need to try to ignore the other person for saying it. They either won't say it, or if they do say it, they just won't say it again. I've seen that happen as well. Sometimes I see them not saying that thing. Sometimes they may say that thing again, but it doesn't trigger an emotional response. It doesn't result in me thinking things that are not true and accurate to my vision. It doesn't result in any kind of seeking behavior, seeking for approval, validation, confirmation from another person. 
And the conversation just changes. And it's never brought up again. So others appear to echo what was whispered in secret and no shame and condemnation. Apply what's being discussed here. And as Neville Goddard said, when you meet people tomorrow that today, let's say, perhaps disappointed you, they will not tomorrow. For in you, you have changed the very nature of that being. And having changed them, they bear witness tomorrow of the change that took place within you. There's only God and God appearing and appearing to play all roles through imagination. So what do you imagine of that one I am? The individual that appears imagines what God appears as. And so I love this part. I want to read it again with you from Enter the Dragon. He said, I see your talents have gone beyond the mere physical level. Your skills are now at the point of spiritual insight. I have several questions. What is the highest technique you hope to achieve? To have no technique. Very good. And why would he say this? Authentic being, being as you are. As you acknowledge that you already are love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, but you say what you don't say, everything flows automatically, what you wear, all these things are so natural and authentic to you. When we see someone like that, we say, there's a person that's genuine, authentic. We can relate this over to what we discussed from Olivia Fox Cobain's book, The Charisma Myth. Authentic power, as in direction. Presence, they have a deep presence. They're deeply engaged in the conversation. Warmth, understanding, genuine respect and care and listening to another person because they are interested. They're having a wonderful time. And so why wouldn't they be interested in the experience? Why wouldn't they be deeply engaged in the experience? And all that is happening automatically as he said here. What are your thoughts when facing an opponent? Well, related to our conversation, are we generating opponents with another person when we're going on dates and relationships? Are we conjuring up people in our mind's eye and arguing with them and creating unnecessary conflict and then wondering why they appear that way as the outer expressions of relationships, be it personal friendship, business relationships, romantic relationships? And so he said, what are your thoughts when facing an opponent? He said, there is no opponent. And why is that? Because the word I does not exist. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I acknowledge my authentic way of being by being still and knowing that I am. From this divine center, I live in and from that. As I continue to live in and from that, the outer expressions of life rearrange to reflect my authentic way of being in harmonious, loving relationships with others, reflecting as flow-based, love-based, peace-based, fulfillment-based, happiness-based, as far as the senses perceive, appearing more so on a continuous basis each day in increasing frequency. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.